what happens is that when we eat our food and if we've got a diet that is very high in, in, in uh, carbohydrates, what happens is that the pancreas produces a, a specific hormone called um, glucogen and it tells the liver to release any stored glucose when the blood sugar levels are low. But also the reverse happens is that when the blood sugar, when the, 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 uh, the blood sugar levels are high, the pancreas, the, the liver takes out the, the glucose out of the bloodstream. But what happens when we over uh, overeating a lot of these carbohydrates, it means that at the same time it causes a strain in the system. It means that your system now right, has right. got stock piles of over of, of, of glucose. You cannot talk, store any more in the liver. So what the liver does for you, it takes all this excess and converts it into what we call a special type of of uh, it. It looks at uh, putting it into what we call f uh, fat cells, mm -hmm. and so that you would find that now after converting this, you now f somebody now. The fat cells always can store enormous amounts of, or it have enormous storage. So somebody continues to become bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh, because so it stores it all in the fat. Yeah. Uh, the fat so the energy is not store. The energy. The, 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 imagine the liver as a storehouse yeah. of, of energy. Yeah. Okay. It releases energy to you yeah. when you need it. Oh, okay. Also, but okay. when you do, when you don't need it, it 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 it, uh, it takes uh, it takes the glucose out of the blood and stores it in in, in the liver. Mm. So what happens is over a period of time that when these stockpiles, it's like the storehouse is full and you keep producing more. Mm. So that what does the liver do? It has to start to process this and take it to what we call the fat cells uh, to, to, to allow the glucose to be stored in, in the fat. That's why people actually end up in a situation where they actually are uh, moving into getting bigger and bigger because or um, get, becoming because, obese. Oh, so that's because um, the liver... Put, uh, stores into the, in, into the cells them yeah yeah the liver what the liver is doing mm -hmm. is, is actually um is breaking them uh, breaking whatever you haven't uh, managed to store in the liver area into what we call um uh, into smaller fat molecules and these fat molecules are then travel to what they call the fatty tissues where they're stored as well in the fat fat cells but what we're also looking at right now is that because we are uh, that's why there's always a link between gaining weight and diabetes is always that link because that is just an indicator, a physical indicator, you could say, of what is happening. And that's why here the Diabetes UK is telling us that 80% of those who are diagnosed with type 2 diabetes are all overweight. So, I mean, if we, we are in, in 2013 and we are aware of all these things and we are looking at, at solutions, and today um, one of the things that I, I, I want to really look at is that there are things that we can do. Okay, there are things that we definitely can do because you know what um, uh, people who have talked about it in, in so many uh, um, rhythms have talked is that the way forward is to really begin to assist the body because the creator has given us an intelligent system. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's magnificent, it's intelligent, it is aware, and it actually works in harmony with nature. Mm -hmm. We just got to listen to our bodies because our bodies are always speaking to us. Mm -hmm. And when we begin to listen to our bodies, we begin to understand that the body is always seeking one thing equilibrium. Mm -hmm. That is why when you're overproducing, uh, when you've got too much blood sugar in the, in the blood, it, the body tries to take the, 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 the sugar out of the blood. Mm -hmm. When there's too little, it tries to release more in the blood. So you're constantly going through that yo yo balance. But when you're in a situation where you want to really begin to look at how we can get, create what they call better um, glucose tolerance. And one of the things that we can do as solution, because I always focus on solutions, is we can eat smaller meals frequently. Okay, so this is something that if you're a diabetic, you're going to just start by eating smaller meals frequently. And really, if uh, one of the things is to chew our food properly, because right. the, most of the digestive process begins in, in the mouth. mouth. In fact, every part of it, the more we chew our food, more the more we're actually improving the digestive um, capacity of, of us beginning to assimilate better, mm -hmm. as well as also assimilate in a way where we can begin to um, nourish ourselves better. But at the same time, if we are overeating, that can also induce diabetes, because mm -hmm. again, overeating leading to obesity as well. So mm -hmm. these are the things that we're talking about. We're talking about the link between diabetes and obesity. Mm -hmm. And today what we're also seeing that one who actually takes a high fiber diet will actually reduce the need for insulin. Okay, so these are things that we can look at, and these are simple solutions that we can apply right here on Find Your Voice mm -hmm. as we continue to journey on. Because mm -hmm. you know what, it's all about solutions. And one of the things that we we are also looking at is that if one has what they call um, is taking vitamin C. Vitamin C is something. I mean, you know, usually what happens is that vitamin C is needed on a daily basis, up yeah, to three thousand milligrams a yeah. day. I mean, this is a part of what they call the family of super antioxidants. 
once you can begin to apply vitamin C, vitamin C does so much in the body, but if you're a diabetic, you need to have at least 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C every day because that is going to help you to improve your glucose tolerance. If you're, if you're mm. diabetic, you need vitamin E, at least 1,000 IU, and this means that this is also going to help you to improve what glucose tolerance as well. Mm. If, you, if you have... Um, by as a result of pregnancy you've developed diabetes or birth control pills then you're going to need something called vitamin b6 because that vitamin b6 is going to also improve your glucose tolerance as well so if you uh, want to reduce any form of nerve damage or that can result as a, uh, as a result of uh, diabetes you can actually use vitamin b12 so these beta vitamins are very essential in managing diabetes as well and one of the most important minerals by the douglas is chromium I cannot stress this more than that, but if we can actually yeah. utilize more chromium in our diet, chromium-rich foods, we can be far ahead in the battle. Because if the pancreas is lacking chromium for long periods of time, that is going to induce states where the pancreas... So the chrome is, that, is, that, um, a sub you get is a supplement? You can get a supplement. It's called chrom chromium pinkolate. Okay, then. Yeah, it's a special supplement that you can get. And you find that chromium is something that is very essential in insulin production. If mm -hmm. you're lacking chromium, you're going to find that uh, what if somebody's diabetic and start using chromium, they'll find that their system actually improves because that is going to increase the body's ability to produce insulin as well as also stabilize. Now, in cases where somebody has actually uh, go to a point where their pancreas is normal, uh, they tell you, oh, you've got uh, um, diabetes and it's, it's something that you're going to t take insulin for the rest of your life. No, diabetes is a lifestyle condition. It mm -hmm. can be managed, but as well, it can be healed. And many healers across uh, our, our community are working in this way to help people to heal. But one of the things I'd like to say is that chromium is so, so essential because not only is it, does it improve um, glucose tolerance, but also helps in the production of insulin. And another nutrient that is so important is, is magnesium. Magnesium is so essential, especially for the elderly as well. If they take a magnesium supplement, that is going to help them to actually what improve. But all these are specialized nutrients. Zinc is also been proven to lower blood sugar levels as well. But one of the key areas is to remember that every part of our body needs nutrients, needs antioxidants, and these and this family of what I call super antioxidants are the vanguard of healing within for diabetes. And that's why when Professor Sally looked into this area for health and well-being. He researched on how we can begin the process of really re reversing this particular condition. And using Mariandina, which you'll find all these things I've mentioned, vitamin C, vitamin B6, vitamin B12, they're all in Mariandina. Just by using Mariandina, that's why people, we've had tremendous success in reversing a lot of diabetes. Over a period of six months, people will find that after four months, they need less and less insulin because the body is now responding to the availability of certain nutrients that allow it to actually not only stop the body's attack, on the immune cells, or, or the, the, what I would call the the, um, the beta cells in the pancreas, but they're also now in a position where you are now able to actually reverse conditions that are leading to your low insulin production, mm -hmm. or even in the say in the other on the other end for type two, where you're now allowing uh, improving your insulin sens sensitivity. So you're no longer um, able to. Because what happens in, with type 2, your, your insulin sensitivity is very much lowered and the, you, you, your insulin tries to, 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 to remove blood sugar in, uh, from, the, from, the, from the blood, but it can't because the, the insulin sensitivity is, is literally in, in, a, in a poor poor state. So you're in a state where we can begin to understand that one of the thick key areas is just by utilizing um, products like Mariandina, you not only improve your capacity to produce insulin, but you also improve your cellular um, structure so that it right. can actually, the insulin sensitivity is greatly um, reduced so that your system can now balance itself better. So that the, that in and out flow where the insulin levels, the blood sugar level needs to be uh, adjusted is a lot more, um, moving a lot more smoother in the system. But one of the key areas, you know, what another key area mm. is exercise. Mm. Exercise is another key area because exercise is not only improving circulation, which is great for diabetics, but it also lowers blood sugar levels. Right, and it, it right. does this by moving sugar out of the bloodstream into, into the cells. And this is mm. where our, our sense of self, that's why a lot of diabetics are actually, to actually spend at least three times a week to go through what they call some sort of exercise where they're literally helping to engage the system so that they can actually move Mm. The, the, this this uh, move, move themselves so they can improve their their, their glucose tolerance. Okay, um, stress. I want to bring your thing about stress into the um, into the reasoning, and 
how would stress affect one's health in terms of looking at everything about diabetes and obesity? I mean, how would that, you know, how would it affect, yeah? Okay, I mean, one of the things that we kind of look at, I'm glad you've asked that question because uh, at the state we're in at the moment, we find ourselves in a situation, Douglas, where we, as we've discussed before with yourself, is that a lot of conditions that we have today are stress-related conditions where people are eating to as eating comfort foods because they want to feel they, they can't cope with the environment so they go and say you know what I want to stuff myself with this so I can forget about what so they their system starts to actually suffer because of stress compensation or stress creating stress really through what they call binging or so that is also a great link between stress and diet because somebody start, moves to a stage where they, they, they are no longer even thinking about what they're eating, whether it's good for them or not. They just want to, they just sit in front of the television and, and scoff a whole basket of something. And they, they don't really think about what they, the, the portion they're eating anymore because for them it's about relieving the stress. Mm -hmm. So stress at the same time can be linked in, in a sense that it also creates a situation where our systems, when they're under any form of stress, it affects... The, the, the whole digestive process, it also affects the immune process right. because it shuts down the immune system. You've been a fight or flight response, meaning that your system is no longer able to respond to do its normal bodily process of really balancing the blood sugar level and doing all of the things of fighting um, any viruses or bacteria. It's now the immune system is shut down, the digestive system no longer functions as it should, be, as it should because all the blood has been taken out from the digestive area and is focused into the muscle area and getting you ready to fly off in terms of... So we are in a situation where stress is causing many secondary effects as a result of the fact that it, it really begins to also pump a lot of adrenaline around your system. And this means a situation where you are now in this sort of situation where you're on, or getting ready to, 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 to like bolt to shoot off into the distance. So, so <laughs> what, we have, <laughs> what we have to do is remember one thing, is that we have to find a way of also um, uh, creating stress. Really, because a lot of what we find that stress not only causes heart disease, it causes inability, it causes people to have l lack of sleep. Because people are thinking about what they're, they're stressed through the night. As they sleep, yeah. they think about work for the next day. They're not really asleep. They're just worried about what they're going to be. Yeah. Or, so worry, stress, and all these things yeah. are, are, are states that can grow and grow. But what we've got to remember, Brother Douglas, is that if we are not having enough sleep, that means the liver, which is the main detoxification organ, is not able to regenerate itself, which it does that between the, the time of 1 a.m., and 3 a.m. Those are the times in which your liver is... Re you should be in the dark, and we should be even talking after 2 o'clock, you know, but just because we're doing the show with you. But I mean, one of the things, that that is a time for regeneration of your liver. And if your liver, between the hours of 1 a.m. and 3 a.m., is not in the dark and you're not lying down, it means your system is not regenerating. You're going to feed it the next week. That's why a lot of people work at night. Their liver suffers. You see, because their liver is not getting the full capacity. And that's why at this, at this moment in time, because the liver is so essential to working with the pancreas, because of what we talked about earlier on, you're finding that if the liver is, which is performing over 500 functions in the body, is not healthy, that means oh, okay. that your system as a whole is not going to, your blood is not going to be filtered properly. Continuous. It also means that you, you're, you're, you're having all kinds of what they call complications. That means the liver is, like I said, is, is, is breaking down this, the, 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 these... Um, excess glucose into fats into fat molecules so you can store them so that process is all going to be that means people are going to actually feel what they call lethargic and tired and, mm -hmm. and have all kinds of liver diseases so one of the things that we, we can look at at this moment in time is also to remember that everything that we're doing at this moment in time is cumulative it takes time mm -hmm. but over a period of time Douglas these disease conditions end up in a situation where our systems not only start to suffer but it means that it brings us into a point where we are now in a state where we're now knowing that if somebody is under constant states of fear and worry, it affects their kidneys. If somebody is in a state of constant anger, as I mentioned before, it affects your liver. If one is somebody is in a constant state of criticism, that is going to create arthritis. If somebody holds states of resentment and bitterness, that is going to lead to cancer. All these are directly reflecting of stressed states of being where one has lowered their emotional level to a level where they're now moving into a state of depression mm -hmm. and states of despair because that all situation leads to an acidic environment in the body and the body is only reflecting what is happening in the mind and the emotional body. 
Boy, Stephen, this is just music to the ears, my brother. And as you talk about the liver, because <laughs> North Africa has mentioned that the liver plays a very important function. And he said that, I think at the other king saw North Africa said that the liver is really the factory, really just break things down, and that's why it's important to work on the liver. There's a thing called, uh, I've been taking it myself, uh, milk, milk thistle, you hear about that one there? Milk thistle is excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent, yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, these things like milk thistle, so these are part of what, call, what we call the family of antioxidants, uh, mm -hmm. super antioxidants, mm -hmm. because these are helping the liver to detoxify and regenerate as well. Because mm -hmm. a lot of things like dandelion, mm -hmm. dandelion is an excellent tonic for the liver. Again, it helps to stimulate the liver to clean and repair and really help you in the process of detoxification. Liver regeneration, milk thistle. Excellent. So we, we have a lot of, I mean, sometimes it's called silymarin, but what we've got to remember as well is that. Um, the Chinese focus the entire focus on the liver. Is because, so? Yes. Yeah. And know. the reason, yeah, they, they, they all their medicine is best around the liver. Okay. Because that liver is not only filtering your blood, but it's doing so many other things. It's also producing antibodies and all kinds of things for your system. So you are literally in a state where if somebody's liver is not functioning properly, they cannot be, be continue existing because that is the main organ that for detoxification. And that's why when somebody's got toxins in the liver, it affect, it compromises the immune system. Right, you see? Right, and once yeah, the toxins yeah. get to a level, that's why, that's why the liver is so important because if the toxins are at a high level, the toxins of the liver and the gallbladder will affect the, your immune system. Okay, then. Uh, because your immune system now have to deal with more toxins and it goes to a point where it cannot cope with the, what we call the influx of things that the liver can no longer deal with because the liver is clogged up or not functioning as it should. Mm, because um, I remember I was talking to Total Africa here and he was saying that uh, we're talking about fasting. And he says that before you get into any kind of fasting, right, it's very important that you strengthen the liver because, you see, when you start to fast, because he used to fast a lot in the, in the early days, but he's put a lot of strain on his liver. And he's saying that the most important thing, right, you need to strengthen the liver. If you do fasting, it's good, but you need to strengthen the liver. You know, and he said the liver is very, very important. You know, that's why I milk this or there's certain herbs you can take. Keep, the, you know, that's something you need to do all the time to sell. Now you said it now, right, and you said the Chinese emphasize more the liver, all things around the liver. So it makes sense, you know, what you're saying, you know, the liver is very, very important. That's why people, they know, you need to get milk, fish, and certain herbs to strengthen the liver. But the liver is a factory of your body, you know? Mm. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, one of the things that are also that we have to, to remember, as you do, you're talking about stress, is that sometimes there's what you call internal stress and external stress. Sometimes your body organs can have what they call, you, you, you can stress yourself without <laughs> anybody stressing you, you know, and this is what we call internal stress. And this stress can build up to a certain level that your system is so stressed, but nobody's stressing you, just your very own thoughts, yeah, your thoughts about yeah. yourself, the circumstances that you're thinking about are probably in the past, but you're yeah. stressed in the, in the yeah. present, that you think about future circumstances, stressing you in the present moment. Yeah. So we can actually create stress relief by living in the moment, mm. practicing present moment awareness. Mm. We can move into a state where we are more, more in a state of calm and tranquility just by really beginning to allow ourselves to recenter ourselves back into the now moment because all kinds of stress is about really living in the past and worrying about the future. Mm. <laughs> I'm mm. telling you, that's what all stress is to do with. It's worrying well, about I'm something. Say that again, live in the past and worry about the future. Yeah. All kinds yeah. of stress is about living in the past and worrying about the future. Mm. Okay, In some form or fashion, mm. it's all linked to that because if you are current in the present moment and you're really anchored in the present moment, then you realize one thing, that you do whatever you're doing in the here and now, you are really beginning to really create a situation where you are uh, being at, in, a, in a state where you are not allowing yourself or, or could say you're, you're, you're making a situation where you're making peace with where you are right now that's the now moment because making peace with where you are right now creates peace of mind okay you say you don't, I don't have to worry about the future because you know what whatever is happening right now you see there, there's two there's two things we can look at you can either continue to worry about what I would call uh, things that you have no control over because or you can say to yourself you know what i don't have to worry about it because i don't have any control now. so you, you either worry about things you have control over well, if you have 
control over them, you might as well do something about them. Take responsibility and do something about it. Even though if it's 1% or 2%, there's always a way in which we can begin to turn the tide. And turning the tide means that we can begin to say to ourselves, what is causing me stress right now? And we offer, they, I mean, you cannot be in the UK here, knowing what we know, my brother, and not be, <laughs> be completely 100%, uh, 0% stress. Stress because we know that just the, the circumstances here in the, in the UK, they are uh, I'm supposed to be anywhere in the world. But obviously, if you go back home and you 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 in in a, in a home environment, or let's say you're back in Africa, or back in the, in the Caribbean, you, you're not going to feel the level of stress that they have here. You know, it's a different quality of life, yeah. different quality yeah. of life, and that's why when people come back from holiday, they just feel they look so relaxed, and they, there's there's a sense of complete, you know. Yeah. <laughs> they just they they're more of themselves than when they were they, they left. So they've been able to relax and really take time to really reflect. So we are in a state where here in the UK it is a constant what you call um, uh -huh. situation where one is literally continuously facing different factors that are stressing the system, and this is why we talk about environmental stress with through pollutants and all kinds of things that are, uh, are damaging our system. For example, from the moment you, uh, sometimes the phone call is calling you and you don't even want to answer the phone. That's <laughs> the phone stressing you. Yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah, people yeah. are going back, they see a whole pile of letters coming through the window, yeah. uh, through the door, and that, that's so. So yeah. we have different things that stress And sometimes it comes up to one thing. How do you cope with the stress? How do you adapt to the stress? How do you manage stress? And these are the key things that we really got to look at in 2030 because stress is a big killer. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's a very yeah, big yeah, killer. Yeah, Many people yeah, yeah. are developing conditions, not because of anything else. I mean, even the things we talked about, diabetes and obesity, people, like I said, go into a state of what they call eating to compa to compensate for stress. Mm. You see, people go into a state where they will mm. take lots of alcohol to compensate for stress. Yes, that's right. People that's go into right. a situation where they will take lots of cigarettes uh, to just try and or whatever to 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 find stress relief. But this does not get rid of the stress. It only masks it, so it goes, it becomes suppressed. Mm -hmm. And because I've talked about internal stress, when stress, eh, stress is energy. So if you cannot actually bring energy and suppress energy with energy, it takes energy to suppress energy. Mm -hmm. So you now your your system has a certain level of energy. So out of the energy, if your energy is 100 percent, 20 percent or 20, 30 percent is going to to really cope with the energy you're holding down or suppressing. That's why I say, hold it down, brother, hold it down. You know, but all this energy is that you're suppressing eventually has to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And this is where we find that our system creates blocks. That's where people get blocked arteries. Mm -hmm. uh, they have blocked coronary, cor coronary heart disease, or they have uh, plaque building in their, uh, their, their blood vessels. All these are a result of what we call stress-related conditions, where the body is trying to cope with this energy that is being forced on the system. And that's why we, we have in a situation where people go into what they call a depressed state of being, mm -hmm. but also they find themselves in a situation where we are... Um, coping with what I call the, the fact where our systems are now, um, even even our young children at the moment, they're being diagnosed with all these things like attention deficient disorder, um, ADHD and a, a, a ADHD and also ADD. All these things are also related to the, to the stress that they go to because they're also bedwetting, uh, rock, um, rocking and all these things are all ways in which the children are expressing different forms of stress. But how do we cope with stress? One of the ways of which we have to do, we have to find a way to relax. We have to find a way of really moving into a state where we can begin the journey of understanding that everything is about what, how you inter interpreting the environment. Because the, you, when, when we look out at the environment, we can either choose to feel a certain way or choose to feel a certain way. Because you're, you're making the choices. You see? You're interpreting the environment saying, this is a stressful situation. Mm -hmm. So what happens? Your mind automatically starts to go into what? For, you, you, and then your brain stimulates the adrenal glands to produce what? Adrenaline and all that. So you, you're now, and you know, it is now studies are showing that mothers who are actually um, in, under constant stress and they're pregnant, their children actually develop more upper, stronger body muscles. And they, 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 uh, there's, there's been cases and studies that are showing that these are because of the high states of stress as well as the body is stressed right through the pregnancy. So the, ch the fetus that is developing actually develops what they call a, a broader, um, stronger muscles. Not because of but it's just that, that because of that flight and flight response. So okay. there's a link between stress and also physiology.
that is being linked right now. And these are studies that are being done, indicating what we're having today as what we call stress responses. Now, we also know that stress can bring on a lot of things like miscarriages and all kinds of things. So we, are, we are have to remember that any time that we are in this space, we also have to find ways in which we can relieve stress. So, I mean, we talk about um, relaxation. I mean, one common mind know, yeah, we could take up things like um, meditation, um, yoga, you know, being in a quiet space, with some jazz music, any kind of music, but, you know, just able to unwind and, and just relax. Just, just take a deep breath and just relax because one of the things we don't do is the, that we, we, you know, we get so wind up. You know, because the system just winds up, up. And then what we do, we start drink to drink. And like I said, that uh, feels like an Iraq, but now that just suppresses even more, right? Or you smite, smoke too, too, too tobacco and so forth, yeah? And that just messes you up as well, you know? And, you know, but you need to just, as, as, as the brother said, just relax. Just relax. Just relax. And look at it from a different, um, you know, because, you know, if you like it or not, there's always going to be things thrown at you. But it's how you deal with it. And look at it from a different point of view. You know? So, um, you know, I mean, breathing against them is, is, you know, is very... Once you ask Marcy out of breathing and, you know, help it to relax the body, anchors the body and so forth. You know, and that's something I encourage people to get involved in doing meditation, yoga, you know, once a week. Because you need to relax, you know? Spend some time for yourself. Just unwind. Because you're in this barbaric system here, you know, it's just messing you up, messing you up, you know. And you know, Steve, that um, I think you might have said it, right? But I know Les Brown has said that most people, you know, have heart attack on a Monday because they're going to a job what they don't like, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you said that. I mean, uh, sometimes, obviously, somebody says, you know what, we, we, uh, we, we have to, somebody once said, do what you love and love what you do. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, it, it's it's an old adage where we, we, we as that was Les Brown who said that, that most people have a heart attack on a Monday because the body is tired of literally that particular way of expressing but it, it, the mind is also locked into a space that there's no choice. No choice. No choice. And if there's no choice, and the, the, the person says, you know what, what am I doing here? So they check out. So in the sense of the word is that we have an opportunity. We always have a choice. Okay. It's just that sometimes the path that we have to take may not be straightforward. Mm-hmm. It may have a few corners and roundabouts. But ultimately, if we, the universe will always um, support us in whatever we want to do. Mm-hmm. It always supports us, but we have to believe in, in in what we want to do, and also we have to strongly desire it. So, whatever whatever we ha- we are seeing in the situation is that a lot of pe- a lot of what happens today in the world we live in is that um, we have been conditioned and programmed to actually. I mean, it's, if you look if you look at what, what is sometimes over even to our, our, our youth at the moment. They're only told, oh, you can only um, do something in either athletics or you, you can only do something in in, uh, in this particular area of of, of of training or field. And all other fields are not actually encouraged. And that, that's why we find that a lot of our youth are also having situations where they're having to uh, be excluded from school and all kinds of things because of the opportunities that are being closed down in their, in their space. So we have to also look at how, as you said, the Monday morning blues or the Monday morning uh, <laughs> situation where, where you, you, look, you look at the clock and the clock looks at you and, and you know you've got to get out of bed at that time but you know what, you just don't want to or you feel, you know, what's the point uh, uh, I, I, I'm doing something I don't love and you, you just have to get you find a way of getting through the day but not really living and this is where you, you find that we are have been put into a situation where we can actually now readdress the situation and say, you know, what can I do or what can I start alongside what I'm doing? And eventually that can actually become a, a, a space of, of expression for yourself. But today we are talking about um, the link between diabetes and obesity. And uh, I just wanted to say the Diabetes UK has actually given what we call um, uh, statistics say, showing that over 80% of people 
diagnosed with type 2 diabetes are overweight. It also says the NHS is spending one million pounds every hour of its, uh, which is about 10% of its yearly bu budget, treating diabetes and its complications. It's, it's a big message because it tells us one thing is that um, we are in a situation today where every family that we are know is affected by diabetes in some form or fashion and it means that if we don't really um, look at what is causing diabetes and why is it that some people have diabetes running in the family and why is it that today we are being offered only one way of looking at this and this is just to be an, on metformin or for the rest of your life or to, 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 to take injections so, so all these things are giving us an, an idea that w diabetes is a lifestyle disease and we can begin the process of really helping ourselves by literally looking at ways in which we can alleviate and clear uh, uh, this particular condition from our system just by improving our diet and also monitoring what uh, um, looking, at w looking at getting rid of any sugar free um, uh, products in our diet because that is one of the culprits at this moment in time and um, even as we were talking about solutions earlier on, we wanted to say that one of the things that we can do is use things like herbs. There's certain herbs that you can use in certain nutrients like for example onions have been used for many many years to to treat diabetes. Yes the simple onion, the simple onion can be used to treat diabetes and even just by cutting up some fresh onions and eating them raw you're actually helping your system to function a lot better in this way and uh, it also um, things like fenugreek and these are little uh, what we call herbs that you can use fenugreek um, is also very very good at regulating blood sugar levels dandelion is as we mentioned earlier reduces blood sugar level at the same time if you are diabetic you can use what we call hot and cold packs on the pancreas area this will also improve um, and you, the way your pancreas functions as well. So there's a lot of solutions that we get, we, one can apply. And um, in 2030, there's no one who could say, you know what, I'm living with diabetes for over 20 years. Th that is just because one has chosen to do that. And one is not using the, the different methods that are available. When I said that because when you go to the doctor and he tells you, oh, you are borderline diabetes, it, it just means that you're teetering on these, that your pancreas has had neglect for many, many years. And what is the tests are showing him is that this is just about um, to push you over into the area where you are going to uh, be, be dependent on on uh, what they call insulin or tablets. And one of the things that we can do is today is to look at things in a way of prevention. And uh, it was the great Imhotep who said to us, "Let your food be your medicine, and your medicine be your food," because nobody at any point in time wants to go through any of the complications that diabetes brings along because it, it, it's just really um, something that people are, are, are put on dialysis um, people have got to go through I mean diabetes they go, go to go through amputations all kinds of things that and uh, cataracts and all these things that are secondary things and also just the, the increase of of, uh, of uh, the increase of, of uh, basically um, infections that uh, the, uh, that well, occur as a result of, of, of being a diabetic. Well, 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 Steve, we'll Greetings. There's anybody on the line here? Sorry, Steve, continue. I thought there's someone on the line. Go on, Steve. Otep. Otep. Yes, uh, yes we, one of the things I was t uh, talking about is that they, uh, we, are, we talked about the, the value of chromium. And um, uh, chromium is so important in improving um, glucose tolerance as well as also improving insulin levels as well. Just by utilizing chromium is something you'd find um, uh, that if you just take uh, two, about 400 micrograms of chromium every day, that will be all you need for optimum sugar regulation. And today, um, you obviously in contact with your physician, you have to really look at ways in which we can begin to um, look at what we call um, a secondary um, uh, secondary um, complications that come because all these com taking insulin does not actually stop the, the secondary um, 
progression of, of these secondary effects. And you find that those who actually are in a state where they have said to them, so resigned to just being uh, on insulin for the rest of their life. Greetings? Greetings. Oh. Good night. Oh, good night. Okay, then. Um, we just catch you on, on the live link here, so I beg your pardon if oh, you've, wow. you've been waiting for a little bit. But, um, my sister, do you have a question? Um, first, let, let people know your name first. That's the first thing. Oh, it's um, Sister Grace speaking. All right, Sister Grace. How are you keeping anyway? You all right? Yes, I'm fine, thank you. Okay, let's get straight to the chance because we're talking about obesity and diabetes, and we know so we're not ease up on that. So you have a question for our Professor Stephen Sally? Um, the question is, what causes obesity or, um, yeah, what causes obesity? Is it addiction to food? Is it addiction to the additives in the food? Or is it um, a genetic, um, is it a genetic gene that causes um, obesity? And um, with obesity is it always that you will have um what is that thing called you will have obesity you will always you'll they'll be like diabetic and other things that sort that go hand in hand with obesity uh, greetings i just wanted to say um Thank you for the question. One of the things that we can also look at is as a cause to obesity is that, I mean, one of the very straight obvious causes is the fact that we are overeating and the food that we're eating is not actually being metabolized in such a way that it allows us to actually begin to utilize it so it just gets stored. So, but one of the things that we talked about earlier on is the, the fact that there's a lot of hidden sugars in our foods and a lot of what we call some of these hidden sugars are mainly in the form of white sugar and anytime you you are in a state where you're taking in more carbohydrates than are actually needed your liver actually tends to break down anything that you don't that you can't store into what we call the smaller fat molecules which then actually take into the fatty tissues of the body and somebody just keeps gaining weight over that period of time but we have to also remember one thing is that we have also moved into a state where as human beings on the space we there is something called msg and msg triples the amount of insulin that your pancreas creates leading to obesity and the amount of foods today that have got msg is just so many i can't even start to name them but a lot of what they call food manufacturers today are adding more and more msg into the food which is monosodium glutamate it actually makes you make somebody actually eat more than they would really normally eat mm. and it also creates a situation where the person is able to actually is is not able to even um, regulate their, their, their discernment their their, their, their their discerning power is full. at the same time also you, we are finding that things like aspartame asofem k and uh, the artificial sweeteners we mentioned earlier on they are also because of their very nature they not only precipitate somebody towards diabetes but also the, the body cannot process them with, with because they are not natural they're not natural nutrients so the, the the body finds a way of storing them in the fat cells that is which in fact you find a lot of people who are actually obese is because the body this if, if you look at a pig right now i mean you think of a pig mm. okay a pig is that size, you know, the pigs go really big and fat because they can eat anything. They can eat all <laughs> kinds of muck on the, on the, when you throw them anything, even a, 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 any plastic, they'll eat it, mm -hmm. you know? So because the reason why a pig gets really big is because one of the things that it does is that the body, the, the pig is now actually in a state where it is actually storing a lot of what we call the food that it's eating in the fat cells. That's why a pig grows very fat. But at the same time, if the pig did not do that, it will kill the brain because oh, the brain okay. has to be protected at all times and that's what you that's what what happens is that the toxins can kill the brain oh, so what the pig right, what happens right, in a in a, right, in a state right, in a, in a right. pig is that the pig tries to protect the rest of itself the body can grow big but the pig's brain mm, is protected mm. we really can eat whatever it likes but but the same when it, when it comes to human beings we're in the same situation because our systems 
are always going to be fo focusing on one thing, protecting the brain. Mm. Okay, and if the brain is these things that we eat have uh, 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 always have we call high level of toxins and toxicity. So the body tries to protect the brain at all costs by storing any toxins in fat cells. That's right. why somebody eating a, o over get, getting a, whole, a lot of toxins in their system, they get bigger and bigger and bigger and fatter and fatter because the body is now. And that's why when somebody does a detox and they they start to they have to drink a lot of water to wash the toxins out. Otherwise, they'll kill the brain. You see, that so? that's yeah. right. Yes, okay. sir. And you find that what happens is that we are in a situation, as the sister has mentioned, that is that we are in a situation where today you find that a, a lot of uh, people who are obese are, are literally in a, in a state where you find that they've been eating a lot of these junk foods that we talked about, mm -hmm. but also their foods that are, their diet has been mainly processed foods and, and what they call, f they've been on what they call these uh, fat diets where they actually, um, you know, these people who try to say, you know what, um, I'm going to go on this fat diet, your, your diet, so they call them, they gain weight uh, one day and then they lose it quickly. So, so we are in a situation where those particular diets, they don't work. Work. They don't work because it's not something that so the system gets into the state where it has a high level of carbohydrates at one point in time, which increase the blood sugar in the body. Then they eventually they so this yo-yo system weighs out the pancreas. Mm -hmm. So the pancreas is overstimulated, mm -hmm. and again the person now remain. That's why the person regains the weight over a period of time because they the body knows it's that's its comfort state. Mm -hmm. It's set there. So we also have to remember one thing is that whatever is is going on in the space is that. Um, there is also a path that we also have to follow, which is really a path of um, what I would call self-regulation. Mm -hmm. Okay, because what has happened is that our palates or our our eating habits have been conditioned to television and to programming and conditioning mm -hmm. that you no longer because of the artificial flavors and artificial enhancers and all this. So we are now being conditioned to eat more eat than more. we would normally would. would. Just by society, you can go large with this one. You can go large with that. Mm. You can go for an extra, uh, extra well, portion. Well, honestly, it's just going to that. Uh, Sister Grace? Sister Grace? Okay, she must, uh, she must uh, hang up. Um, oh, please um, phone back. Um, in fact, let me give up the, um, the new live link number because this one we're using. So the live link number is zero seven nine four seven two five eight 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 nine five. I repeat zero seven nine four seven two five eight 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 nine five. Which is the great if you're listening, if you want to ask further question, feel free to do that. Um uh, well, Steve, I was quite interested when you talked about the um the brain was quite interesting. So, we said at all times, you know, the body is trying to protect the brain. And, yeah, that's quite, yeah. Yeah, break it down again. That's interesting we said there, uh, right? Yeah, because, you know, our brain is made of fatty tissue, fatty cells. Yeah. And it, it's so, in fact, everything in the, I mean, the brain is literally like the, 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 the I mean, it's like your, your command and control center, you know? Your eyes lead to the brain. Your mouth tastes this to the brain. Your nostrils go, st your, your inner, 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 inner nostrils, your passage leading straight to the brain. So your ears are all focusing on the brain. So your, your, everything is just in, com your, your command and control center is really beginning to tell you exactly. So the body tries to, 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 to protect that at all times because that is the most important, what? Area of the whole body, the brain. So. What we've got to remember at this point is when the body senses that the toxic le toxicity level is reaching critical levels, you get a headache. And why, why do you get a headache? B the headache is there because the toxins in the brain are getting to a point where they're starting to affect the functioning of the brain. So the, b the body gives you a headache here, in, in, like a headache in the, in the temples, to, to help you to actually begin to take water. That's what you should do. But what happens is we, we take Panadol and all these things mm -hmm. and we knock out the red light. You see, so instead of dealing with the, the brain, the brain starts to get damaged over a period of time because of what? Of toxicity. So you find that certain areas of the brain start to deteriorate because of what? Of toxic damage. And this is why you find that at the same time, if you, your system is in a, in a state where... Mm. Let's take this call here, Steve. Greetings? Hello? Yes, greetings, my sister. Hello? Yeah, we could. Yeah, greetings. You got a question? So, good evening. 
Greetings. Um, is this the program? Yeah, this is the program. Yeah, find your voice. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, greetings. Oh, God. We can hear you. Come on. Okay. Um, feel free to phone him because we we could hear her quite clearly. She never hears us. The live lead number is zero seven nine four seven two five eight eight nine five. I repeat zero seven nine four seven two five eight eight nine five. Okay, that's the live link. So feel free to phone in. And uh, yes, Stevie. Yeah, I just wanted to continue with what the sister mentioned earlier on about the causes of diabetes. Because sorry, the causes of obesity. And uh, we talked about fast food and and processed food and and how. Um, a lot of these fast food and processed food is actually very high in fat. And if you look at I mean, how this fast food is made... Hold on, Steve. Let's call it, Steve. Sorry. Hello. Greetings. Hello. Good evening. I, 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 I couldn't hear you just now, but I hope I can, I can hear you now. Okay. Great. Um, yeah. I'm phoning because I am a woman in her 50s, yeah. and I was diagnosed with diabetes around seven years ago, mm -hmm. type 2 diabetes. I also have um, high blood pressure and high cholesterol. Mm -hmm. um, I always suspected that I had some form of diabetes from a younger age. I've always been an overweight child, but I was always very energetic and athletic. Um, but my doctor always said that I was borderline and that I wasn't to worry and that the fact that I had a family history of diabetes didn't really mean anything as far as I was concerned. Oh, okay. uh, since I've been diagnosed, it's never been under control. Oh, okay, then. Well, my sister... I'm on next... Sorry. No, sorry, my sister. Go on, continue, continue. Go on, sister, go on. I'm on metformin mm. and several other medications as well as blood pressure tablets and cholesterol tablets. Um, I've recently been hospital hospitalised. As, as, um, January was the last time I was in hospital for three days because I'm starting to have reactions to some of the medications, particularly the blood pressure medications, um, swelling, facial swelling of the eyes, mouth, nose, um, throat being affected and so on um, and I, I just don't know what to do anymore okay I, I, I find it this is the first time and it's only by um, the fact that I can't sleep anymore at night I decided to listen to the radio and this is it's like that's like the first time I'm hearing anything uh, about condition that makes sense to me right well okay m m my sister first we want to salute you sister for phoning in and uh, I'm making us something that is the first time you phoned in yeah Cheers. yeah Cheers. and what's your name my sister my name's Anita 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 we need to give thanks to you and also need to and Steve will um, respond to the, what you just said but just let you know, I don't know if you heard that we're having an event on the 2nd of June. Right? It's focused around diabetes and obesity. Yes. And it will be at the West Green Learning Centre. Um, could you tell me where that is exactly? Where best do you live, my sister? I live in Islington. Okay, do you know where they are, where Black Boy Lane is? Is that in the Tottenham area? That's right. You know the Black Boy pub um, called the Black Grape? I don't, I don't drink alcohol, so I don't know where it well, is. Well, it's, it's well known. People go there. They have um, different um, functions there. Is it near to the college at all? All right. You know where the college is? Yes, I do. Right. You know where Philip Lane? Yes. All right. If you go down Philip Lane, going towards Turnpike Lane. Yes, I know Turnpike Lane. Right. It's, well, it's halfway between... Um, it's... it's it's literally, if you're if coming down from Philip Lane, right, yeah. uh, it's about 
the fourth bus stop and you see a, a building called the West Green Learning Centre. It's called Thank Park View much. Academy. And will that this gentleman that's on the programme today be there by the chance? Yeah, he's part of the panel, yes. And we have someone from America as well. Oh, that's wonderful. What could you just tell me before I go, why is it the Americans seem to be so much more keyed up than us British? Oh, okay then. Well, I didn't. Well, Steve will ask that. Uh, well, I could ask that question as well, but Steve will ask the question as well. Uh, oh, then Steve asked me to uh, to ask that question. Why the um, they're more? It's just it coming to information, really. It's just coming to information. I mean, I want to say they're more um, clued up because you know if we look at the statistics out there, you have so many um, people there, you know, still suffer from bad health. But we find that, look, um, and Steve can um, correct me, that the you know the, the um, holistic um, um, practitioners out there, you know, you have you know peop, you have these individuals like Doctor Africa. I don't know if you heard of him and Queen of Four, and it's been of them. They are very clued up when it comes to health, you know, but they're looking from a holistic um, approach, you know, and they're doing tremendous um, getting tremendous results out there. And same like here, we do have certain practitioners out here and health consultants and doctors who are doing tremendous work, but they don't get the uh, the critic and the praise, you know? So do you, mm. do you think it's a case that we as individuals need to search and find? We need, uh, we need we have to, to do a fact-finding missions and to search out these people? No, of course, we definitely need to do that. But, I mean, um, that's why we've been going for the last few years now you know we focus on a lot of stuff we put a lot of things around health and that's why we're very um, aggressive in our approach because we know that you know we need to you know grab health you know and turn it on his head because what's happening that and you've experienced that and you know many people are suffering from bad health you know diabetes yes. arthritis yes. you know prostate it's cancer it's, huge. it's a big thing yes. You know, it's and we shouldn't be compromised with this. We need to, you know, take this by the, by, by the hand now and say, well, come on now, let's start reverse the process because if we change our diet alone, you know, we get results. You know? Well, the, the thing is, as you say diet, mm. if my mum heard this, she'd be so upset, but I realised as a child we were well fed, but we were too well fed. Well, you see, my the sister... The portions were too large... Mm. The food combinations were wrong. Too much carbohydrates on one ah, plate. Potato, there. rice, macaroni, cheese, all on one plate. Yeah, but my you sister, know, but and, this, uh, yeah, but this, 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 what we're saying because all that now, right? And the Professor Stephen Sally will, will break that down. He broke down earlier on. This turns into sugar, and I this what causes. Yeah, and this what causes the illness. This because what sugar does, it, it's like a burglar. It rubs all the nutrients from the body. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah, when you put it like that, it's very scary. No, it is scary, but it's it's the reality. It's the truth. You know, that's my how we dress it up. You know, this is what causes all the illness. You know, the carbon hydrate what turns to sugar, what rubs the nutrients from the body. Oh gosh. Yeah, you see. I, I mean. I realised this actually started from childhood. I was a child that had to drink a pint of milk in the morning and a pint of milk after school, and it always had to be the richest one, the gold top with the fat what, what at is, the top, you know? Yeah, but you see, my sister, we all, not only you, we've all been, been through that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know? We'll be, listen, yeah. man, let me, sister, let, me, let me show you something, right? Um, before um, Steve and Sally um, come in, right? I was in the, um, in the library Right, and um, I was there doing some work, you know, just checking out some stuff on on my on the computer there, on emails. And this man jump up, right? I never forget this, right? And he goes that um, um, he's gonna get some devil food, right? So I thought, myself, where my table devil food? The man come on, he's with some whopper, um, what do you call it? Fries and um, McDonald's and etc. So I go to him. So tell me something, where are you that for? He goes, oh, boy, I had no choice, you know, I had no choice, mate. You know, like that. But he, he recognizes devil food, but it's still easy. But you see, we're very much emotionally um, have a fear with these kind of food here. 
So it's very deep what we're talking about. It's very deep. Because sugar, because sugar is a poison. But the thing is, yeah. um, when, when I look back at my childhood, I realised that um, food was a big deal in the family. It was, it was uh, we always sat down and ate together. We always communicated around the table. And it, it, it was a big issue. And my mum cooked four times a day, four different times a day. She would cook food plus snacks and fruits. And she gave us notes. She was very good with cod liver oil, vitamins, and senna cleansing, and, and all that sort of thing. But the, the food was a big deal. It was like, you know, something we all look forward to. And then I like kind of congregated around the kitchen as well. So it was a big part of our lives. And we just grew up with that mentality. Mm. I grew up raising my children the same way. Now I have a daughter that was diagnosed in her early 20s with diabetes. Oh. She's expecting a child at the age of 28, and she has to be on insulin four times a day, oh. plus metformin. Well, you see, but you see, the reality is that, I mean, again, I um, mean, Steve will come into, and um, probably correct me, that it comes down to the, um, your lifestyle and, and, and the food you're eating, and, you see? And we can't, you know, we can't play with this thing, you know, we need to change our diet, you know? We just need to, we just have no choice. We just have to change our diet. But is you know? it just the diet or is it the mentality as well? Well, it's, it's everything. everything. I see we're going to, it's everything. It's everything. Because, I mean, it's also the mentality, you know, also the stress as well. You know? Because, I mean, I, I know diabetes is not exclusive to, to black, it's not exclusive to black people. But when you're a poor black person, food is so essential to your life. You know what I'm saying? But, but yeah, you but know, I don't, my sister. But, and, 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 yeah, but Lita, well, Lita, listen to me carefully, right? But what's our diet? What's our diet? What's, our diet? what's, all right, what's the main, main, main base of our diet? Sugar. Could you repeat that, please? Sorry. What is the basics of our diet? Black people's you mean diet. Rice. Rice and what else? Potatoes. Oh God, I hate rice. So um. Rice, potato. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yum. Yum. Yeah. Yeah. Dumpling. Yeah. Dumpling. Yeah. Dumpling. You know? yeah. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you, yeah. but I just, I just wonder if it's just a change of diet or a change of mentality as well. Because right now, I'm on, I'm trying to work with somebody at my doctor's surgery in order to lose the weight because I'm 14 stone and I'm only five foot one. Oh. Yeah, but it's not going to. So be... I'm obese. Yeah, but it's not going to. But, but she doesn't understand. If I say to her I had a dumpling, she doesn't know what a dumpling is. Yeah, but it's, it's not going to be just about... Yeah, but well, no, but it's not just about uh, losing the weight. Anyway, let, let, let Professor Stephen um, um, come in. St yeah, Stephen, no, I mean, I just wanted to, to add and say that um, a lot of the foods that, like, you, 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 you... And greetings, Anita. How are you? Hope you're well. Well, she's not. Uh, I'm not too bad today, but then I haven't eaten very much today. Yeah, but you know what? Also, I mean... Uh, like we said, uh, some of the condition, um, the, the symptoms can that are brought in by diabetes can actually be excessive hunger and uh, excessive thirst, and also the fact that one is also in a situation where they're having frequent urination. Now, if you, if if any, uh, what you were mentioning today about uh, about the fact that you, I was amazed, uh, just stunned by you saying your doctor is, pre so your daughter is pregnant and also having to be on metformin That's disgusting. at such a young age. You know, it just really... And insulin. She's been, she injects herself four times a day with insulin. After every meal, she has to inject herself with insulin. She's checking her sugar up to eight times a day. And she's taking metformin as well, seven times a day. Uh, I mean, oh, uh, as we said earlier on... And a... she has to go to hospital every week as well. Now... Anita, you and I know that, as we've been talking today, there's so many natural solutions into this particular condition and many other conditions. It's just that we have got to go back to what our ancestors used. They used their own natural medicines and their own fruits, vegetables to heal the body. But we have gone away from that and we've now moved into a state where we are just treating signs and symptoms. And this is, wasn't the way forward. We were looking at the cause. What is causing the situation they must they must at such a young age there must be some a failure in what we call the system's operation that is causing the body to now be dependent on insulin from outside so 
we have to look at that. And I, I, I said in one of the solutions that we can apply is for people who, who are uh, pregnant, uh, and uh, uh, because they, they, this can, um, this can uh, during the pregnancy they might develop diabetes. But there's something called vitamin B6 that they can take. This will help to alleviate and uh, any the body is attacking its own cells. And that's what they call autoimmune diabetes. And this is where, the, when enough of those cells are produced, the person cannot produce insulin for themselves again. And uh, they are in a space dependent on what they call insulin from outside, which is animal insulin. It's not your own insulin. And this is what they get. It's harness from a pig. Yeah, that's where they get the insulin from. Mm -hmm. They actually have to process the insulin from a pig and get it into what they call. And then you inject yourself with this animal insulin. Of course, it's not your own insulin. So your blood sugar levels cannot actually be...
colorful details, intricate, ornate, and regal. Molded by the potter's hand, each one has its purpose written in the master's plan. From the roots of the tree to the many fishes in the sea, I sit back astounded by what I see. Father God, you amaze me. A golden aura shines from my center, reminding me I am also part of Mother Nature. Made in the image of the Almighty, reflecting divine power daily. No to KFWB News Talk 980. My name is Les Brown, and welcome to our show. We want to thank you so much for joining us Monday through Friday from 2 o'clock until 4 o'clock, where we bring you a program that's designed to, to inspire you to live your dreams, to, to get out of your head and get into your greatness, because you have something special. You have greatness within you. And we have a program that I want to invite you to join us to talk about today, a change and a, a real major difference that you can make in your own life. But before I get to that, I forgot to tell you, I want to remind you, you know, L.A.'s first ever spring fair is taking place tomorrow all the way through the 17th. That's dark on Monday and Tuesday at the Toyota Speedway in Irwindale, right off the 605 freeway. Now, a great fair tradition, there'll be rides and carnivals and games and dish delicious food and concerts and lots of fun and the whole family be there. And... I wanted to be there to see you live, but we won't be there. No, and I'm so disappointed because there's 40% chance of rain. Now, I would be covered. I would electronic equipment. We will have coverage, but you would not have, and that would not be a good time for you. And we want this to be a good experience for you. So, we won't be there tomorrow, but we will be announcing another event where we will be, where we'll broadcast live, and hopefully, I'm going to really talk to them about it, that it's a motivational event where I give a motivational speech and then sit down and talk and get up and motivate you again and interview you and sit down and talk and something like that, all right? So, but we won't be there tomorrow because of the weather conditions. But thank you so much for thinking about coming out to join us, especially all the people who will think about sneaking in free. <laughs> You won't be able to sneak in now. No, no, no. That won't happen. It opens at 5 o'clock. You know, I want to talk to you about health. Face it, change is hard. There are many things in one's life that can stand for change, but actually identifying what to change, let alone actually changing it, is difficult. For one thing, that cannot be changed is family history especially your medical history. When I go to the doctor, that's a challenging time for me. You know why? They ask me, say, Mr. Brown, tell us your medical history. And I can't because I don't know anything about my birth mother or birth father. I'm adopted. And so I have no medical records. And so when I, I was told that I needed to have angioplasty and, and I didn't have any symptoms, I, I eat well, I'm, I'm a vegan, I exercise, I can do over a hundred push-ups. I couldn't do that when I was 20. I, I was shocked and they said, Mr. Brown, the fact that you have a good, healthy lifestyle doesn't matter. You know, there's some things that you pick up in your genes. And so I did not know that I had some, some of my coronary arteries 
over 85% blockage. And, I, and the first warning of, of heart disease, one-third of the people's first warning is death. That's right. So fortunately, I have five stents in my heart. I, and I've changed my eating habits. My cholesterol now is 61. I, I had to change everything. And so there's this gentleman by the name of, of Dr. Scott Zahn, his medical family history is not great. On both sides of his family, they have hypertension and diabetes and strokes. On both sides. And so, and, 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 and it took toll on his father recently. Dr. Zan's father died just a couple of weeks ago of a heart attack in his home. And so Dr. Zan told CNN that he knew that his father had weight and heart problems and was suffering from diabetes, and that affected his lifestyle and his ability and his willingness not to be active. And so he decided, look here. I know 25, 30 years from now, that could be me. I'm going to change. He was suffering from high blood pressure, and he had a, a variety of medications for all types of other issues, and he decided, I'm going to change. So he, he made a radical change, and, and, and he decided to get in shape. He decided to take part in the New York Triathlon in, in August of 2011. And, and his first goal was to get off some of his medications. And after just exercising an hour a day, four to five times a week, times a week he has reduced his medications. I, and I've done the same thing. And now he, he's going for a, a bigger goal. Dr. Zan is exercising and working hard to get off his meds, and he's preparing for the New York Triathlon, and he's aiming to swim 1,500, that's right, 1,500 millimeters in the Hudson River in the 40 millimeter bike ride along the Manhattan west side and ending with a 10, milli, a, a 10 kilometer run in Central Park. Now just think about this. I, I'm, I'm reminded of the guy who was in the LA Marathon and, and he, 400 pounds, he, he, he finished nine hours later, but he finished 400 pounds, all 400 pounds of it. I said, uh-uh, I've got to do it. And so my, my, my trainer, he's going to get me started. I'm going to start practicing in May, and I'm going to run next year in the L.A. Marathon. So here's what I want to know. What is it that you're doing? What, what is it that, that calls you to say, I'm going to do this for myself, or I'm going to do this for my family? Some people do it for their kids. Some people do it for their family. My son called me and said, Dad, I know you, you don't like going to the doctors. I know you don't want to have this, this procedure, angioplasty. I No, Calvin, they said, I can die. She said, he said, Dad, Dad, I know, but you need to do this. The doctor said, if you, you want your father to see your great-grandchildren, you need to have him do this. And I did, and I'm glad, because I probably wouldn't be here. And now I, I'm, I'm dealing with another health challenge, and so, but I'm on top of it. And I want to thank the thank the Second Baptist Youth Fellowship Church at 2412 Griffith Avenue. They sent me a beautiful card, and they and it, it written in this card it said, "We know that you have looked a thing dead in the eye, acknowledged that it exists, called it exactly what it is, and decided what role it will play in your life, that it will be used to inspire us." We're praying for your heart. Wow, when I got that. Thank you so much. Oh, that, that was such a beautiful card and so thoughtful of you to send that to me. I want to know what what is it? I want to live. There's some things that I'm called to do. I'm, I'm called to open up a center. I'm called to work with young people. I'm called to work with people to live their dreams. I don't believe that, that my time is up now. There, there's something that, some work that I'm supposed to do. Some of these plans will be pulled up before I leave the planet. There's some things that I'm supposed to do. I, I'm supposed to give a message continuously as I've been giving for 15 years. You are more powerful than cancer or any disease that affecting you. I'm supposed to inspire you as I'm doing right now. And so that inspired me. I want to live. There's a cause that's greater than me. It's not about just me, but it's the calling on my life. What is it that motivates you? Is it your ego? Is it because you want to look good? Is it your relationship? Or is there a calling on your life? that you say, that's what drives me because my work is not done yet. That's what we're talking about now. What motivates change? 
I want to know what drives you. What's what's the, the emotional driver that caused you to make a radical change in your life? Wilson Pickett had a song years ago called 99 and a half won't do. If you're going to change your life, how many of you know 99 and a half won't do? You've got to have a hundred if you're going to change your life. If you're going to improve your health, I want you to call me and let me know. What is it that drives you? The number to call is 888-539-2980. I want to hear from you right now. Some of you have made some radical changes in your life. Where you just said, you said to yourself, this is it. I've had it. I want to live. This, this is not me. I've let myself go. No, 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 no. I'm not going out like this. No, you just have you ever just been upset with yourself and you had to kick your own behind? <laughs> I've done that. And you just say, no, 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 I I'm not going down like this. I can handle this. I can do this. And maybe you needed to go get some help. Call me and let me know what radical change you made and what drove that change. The number to call is 888-539-2980. I want to hear your story. Call me now. You're gonna inspire somebody. 888-539. 2980. I want to hear from you now. Call me now. I'm Mrs. Mamie Brown's baby. And so what are you going to do with this? Say this life is God's gift to us and how we live our lives is our gift to God. What are you doing with this life that you've been given? You know, a lot of people are short-circuiting their lives by not taking care of themselves. And I've had people say to me, oh, I just don't feel like exercising. Got a quote for you. Do what you know, not what you feel. Mm, come on now. I don't feel like doing push-ups every day. I don't feel like going up and down a flight of steps 20 times a day. I don't feel like that. No, Santa Monica Stairs, I don't feel like that. But do what you know, not what you feel. Because if you do what you know, you know that that's good for you. I know that that stops the progression of cancer in my body by 37%. I know that that strengthens my heart. I know that that will cause me to lose weight because every pound that you're overweight takes six months off your life. I know that that keeps me younger and more vibrant and gives me more energy and I feel good and I sleep better and enhances my sex life. Oh, come on, Chevrolet, Honda, Honda, Toyota, 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 God be speaking to Toyota. Let me tell you something up in here. I say do what you know, <laughs> not what you feel. Are uh, you feeling me up in here? of it here and that's what a lot of people allow their feelings to govern them no no it's not about that do what you know hello andrew thank you for calling i want you to call let me know what radical change you made in your life the number to call is 888-539-2980 that's 888-539-2980 i want you to call me now hello andrew hello thank you so much for calling what change have you made in your life um, I was, uh, I was 21, I, uh, I had been out of college for about three years, just working sales jobs left and right, and was pretty successful in them, but, uh, I knew that I didn't want to be in that retail environment, environment for the rest of my life, so, it took a lot of talking from my mom, and it took a lot of talking from, uh, a lot of friends and family, but, uh, I finally one day, uh, actually it was a while ago, I, uh, I heard the show that's before you, Dave Ramsey, and, uh, he told me, or uh, he had a quote on there that said, uh, the difference between a goal, I'm sorry, the difference between a dream and a goal is a plan. Mm -hmm. And I realized that without a plan, I'm not going anywhere. Yes. So I sat down, I made my plan for school, and uh, I'm on track to graduate next year. Congratulations. Uh, wow, congratulations that you decided to make that change in your life. Yeah, thank well. you. Well, huge congratulations to you. You deserve the best. The mark of greatness is upon you. Thank you so much for calling in. Hey, listen, I want you to call and tell me what, what dramatic change did you make in your life to improve your life for the better. And we know that it's not easy. We know that it's not easy. And, and here's what we know. You can either be proactive, you can change yourself, or life will change. And the change that life will bring on you might not be the one that you desire. So you want to be in the driver's seat. You want to be in charge. It's been said that, that, that most people die at age 25 and don't get buried until they're 65 because most people go through life as walking, breathing corpses. Dr. Dennis Whaley said that most people let things happen, but a very few number of people make things happen in their lives. And the people that, that are, are living the greatest version of their lives, people who've decided to improve their health. Here's this gentleman, Dr. Scott Zahn. Dr. Zahn 
on both sides of his family. The, he saw hypertension and diabetes and, 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 and mem family members having strokes, and his father died a few weeks ago, and he decided, unlike a lot of folks who see family members dying of everything, and they continue to do the same thing, refuse to change their lifestyle, 85% of the diseases that people are dying from can be changed, can be prevented by the lifestyle change, by the lifestyle change. And, and, the, and the reason that most people don't do it is because they say, I'm not feeling that. I'm not feeling exercise. I, I'm not feeling not eating the kind of things I want to eat. you got to die from something. Well, don't help the process. You're going to die anyhow. Nobody's lived forever. I want to know, what is it that you did and what drove you to that point to, to have that level of discipline? You know, Socrates said, the undisciplined life is an insane life. And when I look at my life, for a long period of my life, I was insane. I was undisciplined. And I feel like the guy who said, if I'd known I'd have lived this long, I'd have taken better care of myself. <laughs> and that is absolutely the truth. I want you to call me right now. The number to call is 888-539-2980. I want to know what radical change that you make to improve your health. What was that wake-up call for you? What was that moment for you? Fred Abai said he went up the steps and was huffing and puffing. He could barely make it to the door. He said, no, I got to do something about this. And he made a decision to improve his health. And, and he hasn't looked back. And he, he looks 20 years younger. I want to hear your story. You're going to inspire somebody today. The number to call is 888-539-2980. That's 888-539-2980. Five three nine two nine eighty. I I know I mentioned this earlier, but I got to say it again because we were pushing it so hard. I I was going to be tomorrow at the spring fair, but we won't be there because of the inclement weather. We won't be there, but we're going to. Yes, first of all, thank you for those of you that were willing to sneak in to to see me. But because of the broadcast being canceled because of inclement weather, we're going to schedule something else. So. Spread the word. We, we won't be there. But the fair will be going on, most certainly. They, they're dark on Monday and Tuesday, but it will be going on all the way through the 16th, and they have the carnivals and rides and all types of other good things. So the family's going to have some fun. We don't know whether or not it's going to rain the whole weekend or not. I've been talking about what are you willing to do and what drove you to make some dramatic change in your life. And the number to call so that you can share that, I was just thinking, is that, that one of the things that drive me is I want to live. I, to me, I, I don't want to be a burden to my children. I, my, I'm going to take care of myself. As you get older, I, I always say to people, as you look at yourself, who wants to be a burden to anybody? I know the more I exercise, the more flexible I am, the more that I'm walking, I'm walk while I can, and, 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 and I'm going to eat right. My goal is to live forever or die trying. You know, I'm going to die young at an old age. I'm going to take care of me. And I believe that the people that 